like let's have church. Hola, hermano Medina. Hermano Jose Alvarez. Yo te diga. Saludos de Ponce. Saludos de los Estados Unidos de esta estado. De Norte de Carolina. North Carolina. <laughs> Fue un tipo muy grande en Ponce. Gloria a Dios. Bendiciones a los miembros y al pastor Matos y todos los santos. Come on in with we'll a praise, somebody. Come on in, clapping your hands. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, yeah. Live and he love me. Die and he save me. Come on in. Ooh. Y'all know live and he love me. Dying, he saved me, buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified and freed me forever. One day he's coming back for the glorious day. Oh, yeah. My, 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 my. Janet, God bless you all. Glad to see you tonight. We believe God for great things tonight. Once you join in, let's bless the name of the Lord. Live and he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rise and he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming back, glorious day. Live and he loved me, dying. There he cared. Rise and he justified, free me forever. One day he's coming back. Live and he loved me, uh, dying. And there he cared my sins far away. Rise and he justified One day, one day Live and he loved me Oh yeah And bear it he cared Rise and he justified Free me forever Glory One more time, live and he loved me Oh, my sins far away.
Live and he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified me and freed me forever. One day he's coming back. What a glorious day. We honor the Lord and we thank God for you, his people. Thank God for you that are uh, following the program at this time. Amen. And I see something I'm going to change real quick. But I just thank you for your faithfulness to the worship, to the service, to our Wednesday night gathering. Amen. And how the Lord has blessed us to come together because we are indeed his and he is ours. Amen. And we had prayer this morning. Amen. Now we're back for our Bible study. And we appreciate you that follow safe, follow closely and support the work of the Lord. Thank you for your tithe and offerings, those that give regularly and are part of this great church. We honor God for you, for without you, these things would not be possible. The Lord has blessed you to bless the church. And so doing, uh, many are able to receive a word that I believe is a good word, a tangible word, an effective word, an effectual word. Why? Because it is the word of the Lord that the Lord is giving to his people. We are uh, asking you to share tonight, share to your friends and to your pages, and uh, let others know that the Bible study is taking place. We will be in the book of Romans chapter 6. Chapters five and six is where we will take our lessons. We honor you that are present. Amen to Sister Brenda and Robbie Green, Danny McCoy. Amen. Yaki, uh, call her TK Bledsoe. God bless you if I mispronounce your name. Cheryl Williams, thank you for being with us today. Amen. And so many others, perhaps on other pages that I don't see. But nonetheless, thank you for being a part of the lesson, being a part of what God is doing. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I ask you this morning, over the course of the day, every now and then just put your hands up and create sanctuary where you are. Let the presence of God come in. Let his glory fill your room. You don't have to be in the church to have church. No, because you have a unique power to bring sanctuary where you are. And that's why the writer said, I will lift up my hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. And that's what I want you to do. Make blessing the Lord your assignment, your purpose, your ministry. Because trust me, he won't let you bless him any greater than he blesses you. You dare bless him, he will bless you in return. So we praise God for you. We thank God for the opportunity to enter into the word. And I ask you to continue to be prayerful. Uh, we certainly look forward to being in the service you Sunday on third Sunday. Amen. And I believe God's going to bless. We honor our Pastor Aaron and to the elders and ministers of our great church, to the deacons and mothers and all of you that called Old Landmark home and those of you that follow virtually, that follow online and receive your message, your ministry, amen, from this site. We thank God for you because it is important that we receive something from the Lord. This age of uh, telecommunication, this age of receiving from methods such as this that we have now become acquainted to during the time period of COVID. Uh, these times, although there will be certainly a return to the church, but there will always be room for this type of virtual ministry. And I believe God has allowed it to be, and we have to accept it that as things change, we have to update, but the word of God is yet the word of God. So I appreciate the pulpit and I appreciate this platform as well. Let's pray. Dear Lord, our Father, we thank you for your blessings, for our life, help, and strength. We ask that your blessing be upon your people. Speak to our hearts and minds, even now at this time, 
Let your will be done. Give us what you would desire for us to receive. Feed every one of us that we might be better thereby. Touch our hearts to receive what you give, our ears to hear what we haven't heard and our eyes to see what we haven't seen, that we can be better servants, better servers, better folk who worship you, better people who give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Say thank God and amen. We appreciate each of you and we're Believe, we believe God for great things and for his promise. Uh, so many have put in prayer requests. We're praying for you and your condition that our God who knows all and can see into the secret place, he is able to bring you the desires of your heart. Whatever you need, our God is able to bring it to pass. If you believe me, put a praise right there. Hallelujah. And I'm gonna pull a mother buck on you. She says, so if you believe it, and it's so if you don't, and that's just the way it is. He will bless, he will keep and preserve, and he will cause you to enter into the blessed place. And that's what you wanna do, is to come into the place where his blessing is, where his power is, where his grace is. It's an amazing story, the story of salvation. It's an amazing story, the story of his grace and his peace his love for mankind. In the book of Romans chapter five, we'll find these things when we understand what Jesus is and who he is and why he came, it will help us understand what we benefit. The word tells us in five and 15, it wasn't just the offense, but also the free gift, that's who he is. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, thinking of Adam, because of Adam's offense, his sin, many died in the spiritual method, in the spiritual manner. Much more the grace of God and the gift by Christ, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Just like one man launched us into a world that took us out of the place of peace, the place of happiness, the garden, the comfort, of sin-free living, Jesus, by grace, has allowed us to return. Verse 16, chapter five of Romans, verse 16, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. This is the gift. We got our blessing by one who was sin-free, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. I like that right there, reign in life, because some of y'all are waiting to live. Yeah, some of you all are waiting to live. You're still getting yourself together. And you say, I'm gonna live a good life after a while. I'm gonna, I'm gonna live the blessed life after a while. I'm, you need to live your best life right now. This is the time for you to live your greatest life. Let the glory of God rest and abide in you. Why? Because you have received the gift of righteousness. And because of grace and righteousness, you get to reign in life by Jesus Christ. You get to have a blessed life, good time right here, blessings, joy, peace, happiness, provision, shelter, all that you desire, you are allowed to have it right here because of Jesus Christ. So as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came unto all men under justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Everybody would agree, we all have sinned and fallen short. But why won't everybody agree that through Jesus, we can be made righteous? The same word that says we were all made sinners because of one man, 
We should believe that we can all be made righteous because of one. Because of one man's disobedience, we were made sinners, but because of one man's righteousness, we can be made righteous. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, he is able to condemn sin. Crucify it, great preacher, prophet Johnson. Crucify sin. He is able to destroy it. He is able to bring it down. Well, people don't believe that sin can be destroyed. They, they want to find a way to have sin in their life and be saved. They want to find a way to have unrighteousness and be saved to live any life they want to live and still be saved. But how many know holiness just doesn't work that way? Sanctification just doesn't work that way. Living for the Lord just doesn't work that way. You have to put a difference between clean and unclean. You got to make a difference between righteousness and unrighteousness. And if the Lord has worked his work in you, you have the power to live the righteous life. Did you hear me? Don't let people tell you what you can't do. Because as by one man, we were all concluded unto sin through one other man who obeyed. Adam brought sin by disobedience. Jesus brought the free gift through obedience. And that is the gift of righteousness. Justicia for those in Puerto Rico. The gift of righteousness. It is a gift unto you, the people of God. It is a gift unto you that you might understand who God is. And it is a gift you don't have to pay for. It's already been paid for. I know you get mail as you get these advertisements. You've already won a gift. You just need to pay for shipping and handling. You know what? Jesus already covered the shipping and the handling. He told Mary, don't touch me. I got to go and present myself to the father. He didn't ask anybody else to take him to God. He himself knew how to get there. He shipped himself, amen, and then came back and said, now you can handle me. Put your hand in my side, Thomas. That's shipping and handling. It's all free because of one man, but you have to be willing to accept it. The free gift came upon all men. Say with me, all men. That's verse 18, Romans chapter five. The free gift came to all men. And this is not dealing with men in the gender context. It's dealing with men in the context of those who have been made by God under the banner of humanity, male or female. And if you bought into the satanic lie of multiple genders in between, then guess what? It's a free gift for you too, because you are the handiwork of God. And it comes on all unto justification of life. You can have the righteous life, not because of your doing, but because of his doing. And I know people say that's impossible. And so you don't have to create a church that endorses unrighteousness just so people can hear a word from the Lord without the condemnation because of the sin that's in their life. You don't have to create a ministry based on acceptance of something that God has already declared was unrighteous because you are trying to create a way to save folk. You're still trying to, to devise a way to get people to come to Jesus. You're doing all you can to try to find a way to get all of the multitude of mankind and, and all of those with issues and sin in their life and unrighteousness and some hard situations. You're trying to figure out how to get them into the church. And so you want to change the rules and modify understanding, even change our teaching. We don't want to teach hard. We don't want anybody to be offended. Well, 
offending will come, offenses will come. But I promise you this, by one man, one man, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So whatever your life, your lifestyle, your life has been, there is one man who has paid the price that can bring you into justice, which is righteousness with God. And I know you know I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Some say, well, yeah, that's why we had the law. We wouldn't know what to do if we didn't have the law. We wouldn't know how to live if we didn't have the law. Pastor, we need the law so people know what's right and what's wrong. Well, verse 20, more of the law entered. That's why the law came, that the offense might abound. The law came in order for folk to identify what it was that God was displeased with. If there was no written law to identify the displeasure of God, many would say, well, I don't even know why God would be upset. So he couldn't be upset with us because this is just the way we are. You know, you only live 70, 80, 100 years, but if in your lifetime, all you see is one lifestyle, you may come to the conclusion that that way of living is God's blessing or the way that God has ordained for man. But thank God for grace a word can come that some heart will receive and say, hey, that was not the will of God for us. So the law entered that they could have an understanding, not of deliverance, but of sin. The law came that the offense might abound, that they would start to identify sin in their own life. If you are not willing to look at it, then you're not willing to clean it. If you're not willing to admit it, you're not willing to quit it. That's why the law came, thou shalt not. Shalt not what? Thou shalt not kill. Really? Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not steal. What? Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife or his mule, or his land. You would think those things were common knowledge, but man needed a rule. Man is some kind of creature made in the image of God, but sure doesn't act like God, does he? Or she. Man will go and run amok if man didn't have a direction. So God gave the law to highlight what sin is. But where sin abounded, where there was a whole lot of sin going on, he did something to nullify it. He did something to uh, take the sting out of it. He did something to reduce it. He gave us grace. That's a praise moment. Thank you for grace. Thank you for grace. For when the world was turning towards sin, God had a right to bring condemnation. He had a right to bring destruction. But instead, he brought grace. He brought a spirit of peace. He brought a spirit of love and understanding. He brought a spirit that said, no matter who you are, where you've been, my grace is sufficient for you. No matter what you're going through, my grace is able to turn it around. My grace is able to open a door. My grace is able to make a way. My grace is able to bring blessings into your life. So yes, he showed us sin that we could appreciate grace. In fact, now that sin has reigned under death and we've all witnessed what sin does, even so now might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So sin brings forth death, but grace brings you life. Who wouldn't want grace? Everybody needs grace. Why? Because grace is the counterbalance, the nullifier. Grace is the reducer of sin. Grace is the great equalizer that makes your sin less important and your relationship with God more important. That's what grace does. Add a little grace to sin and then you don't want sin no more, you just want more grace. 
Well, Romans 6 and 1, what shall we say then since uh, grace is a great thing and grace only has its place where sin is at work? Uh, maybe since we all want to embrace grace, I guess we should all do more sin. What shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Let's stop there for a minute, verse 1. He says, shall we continue? Shall we continue? His next word is God forbid. God forbids that you should continue. Which means you can come out of the sin business. Somebody put a praise right there. Six and one and verse two tells you you can quit the sin business. Stop saying sin is natural. Sin is the way it is. Sin is the way of the world. That's the way he made us. No. He gives you grace. Not that grace should always have to cover sin, but he gives you grace that will lead you to righteousness to the point that you can be dead to sin and don't live in sin any longer. I know we appreciate medicine. Grace is medicine for sin. But you know what? You really would like to not have to take medicine the rest of your life. You might as well say amen. I know I'm preaching to everybody right now. Yeah, you're going to take it as long as you need it. But doctor, do you have something that I won't have to take the rest of my life? I want to get over this condition. I don't want to just learn to live with it. I want it gone. You find anything that shouldn't be. Take it out and strengthen me. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. That's the difference with grace. Grace is there to support you while you adapt to the ways of Christ while you learn and grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And while you learn how to mortify that in you that needs to die so that the grace of God can reveal the man and woman in you that needs to live. In fact, Paul goes on to say, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You gotta get to a point where you just don't want to sin anymore. You just don't want that sinful life. You get tired of the party life, get tired of the worldly life, get tired of going out and then coming to church, feeling the condemnation. What are you gonna give up the world or the pathway to Jesus? I'll take Jesus for mine. You may have the whole wide world. I'll take Jesus for mine. That's the point you have to come to, that I will accept the Lord as my Savior. I will embrace him. I thank him for grace, because had it not been for his grace and his mercy, I couldn't be here. But do we live in grace? We want to be able to live where we no longer have to trust the cover, but now we can walk in the light. How shall we then that are dead to sin live any longer in it? You can't live in something you died from. Once you leave one state and go to another, you can't be in the state at the same time. You're either in one or the other. One writer said you're going to have to serve somebody. Could be the devil, could be the Lord, but you're going to serve somebody. Don't you know that as many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, we were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That's water baptism. It's a similitude. It's a, a representation of what you went through in the spirit. When you've been baptized in the spirit, the spirit baptism doesn't come to provide grace over sin. The spirit baptism comes to fill the house where that wicked was, where that wicked man was, where that wicked spirit was. And it fills it up so much there's no room for that unrighteousness. Yes, we need grace. 
and grace gives us peace. But even more than that, we need the love of Jesus. I said we need the love of Jesus in our hearts. We need the love of Jesus that will cause us to tell the world goodbye. I'll take Jesus for mine. Tell the world I'm gone. I will follow Jesus. I'm going all the way with the Lord. Tell the world through his grace, through his mercy, I am saved. The thing I want you to learn today, it, we use it grace and peace, grace and peace. Absolutely, we always need his grace. But at some point, you ought to graduate and live the life of righteousness. Live a holy life. Don't struggle all the time. Come out of your struggle. I know we have trouble, but you ought to come out of trouble at some point. I know you got stress. So you ought to come out of that stress at some point. I know you got issues, but your issues should disappear because of the work of the Lord in your life. I know what, I would rather have Jesus than any other thing that this world can afford to give. I would rather have Jesus and accept his teachings of righteousness. And you can't get this if you're not willing to embrace the word of the Lord. His grace is sufficient. But most of us don't want to live with sufficient. We want to live the bountiful life, the good life, not the barely making it life, not the don't know how I made it life. You want to live the life that is overflowing with blessing, overflowing with joy. That's the abounding life, the bountiful life. To live the bountiful life, you've got to understand what grace is and where grace is to carry you. And then you got to find out how to walk by faith, moving from grace to faith. And the just shall live by faith. The righteous live by faith. Now I'm walking hand in hand with the Lord. Now I'm walking with my mind made up, my heart fixed. I'm going all the way with the Lord. Now I clearly understand who Jesus is. He is the one that took away the curse of sin and has given me the power to have eternal life now. My life begins and goes forward. Church used to sing a song we still do in certain places that already died. Don't have to die no more. Already died. <laughs> Don't have to die no more. Wasn't saying we weren't gonna give up the ghost and stop breathing. But the church understood that if you die now, you don't have to die later. You die the spiritual death now and have a spiritual resurrection. Then you won't have to die death later. That's what the Lord wants from you. Make a lifetime commitment. I'm going to live for Jesus. I'm going to work on me and ask the Holy Ghost to fix me so that I can stop walking in the frustration of grace, but walk in the liberty that Christ has set me free. And free means I make a choice. When you're addicted, you, can't, you don't make a choice. But grace delivers you from the addiction of sin. Grace delivers you from the power of sin over you to the point that now you can walk in the light. And it is written in James, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, First John, we'll have fellowship one with another. We'll come to church and celebrate another week with Jesus, another day with the Lord. Can hardly wait to get in the congregation so I, I could see the other believers who've been through what I've been through, going through the storms I've been through. Amen. But they have a testimony. I made it over just another day that the Lord has kept me. How many can say it's just another day? Just another day. And if you thank him for that day, it is because of his grace 
in your life that he has allowed you to have peace in your soul. May the Lord bless you. Read that Romans, uh, start at the end of verse five, chapter five, and those last five or six verses, 15 through 21 thereabouts, and then Romans six, one and two and three and four. And you'll find out grace had its work, just like the law had its work. But Jesus came not that we should live by the law, but he came that we should know that the law had its flaws, but it was there to cover your sinfulness, your unrighteousness. But now, somebody say, but now. But now we do not sin that grace may abound, God forbid, because we have died to sin. We don't have to die anymore. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a praise right there. Oh, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for its understanding. We pray that men and women everywhere will come to the knowledge of you as Lord and Savior, not walk in fear, oh, God, but walk in faith, knowing that you are the God of our salvation, that you have given us the tools that we need to live this life. Let your people be blessed and your homes of the people be anointed. Keep every evil spirit out, protect and keep us from sickness and disease. Oh, God, settle our hearts and our minds. Hallelujah. Let every heart be convinced that you are the God of our salvation and that because of you, we can move on from grace that is connected to unrighteousness to the spirit of the Lord, which gives us freedom in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And we praise you now in Jesus' name and amen. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Well, I thank God for you. I thank God for his lesson, for the work. I thank God for the blessing. I thank God for the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word. You need the word from the Lord. We don't forsake the word of God. We don't forsake the teaching. Every chance you get, come to the church, be a part of the services. We have, we have returned uh, to the auditorium 12 o'clock on Sundays, 12 o'clock on Sundays. This is our midweek gathering on Wednesday nights virtually but we meet 12 o'clock on Sundays. And I expect you to be a part of that regular attendance. I expect you to make this your choice. Commit your way to the Lord. Make sure you understand. We're gonna to render to Caesar what's Caesar's, but to God, what is God's? And we call it Sunday, the Lord's day. Then give him his day. He'll give you some time back. Everyone that can, be with us Sunday morning. Come before 12 and let us have a wonderful service in the Lord. We thank God for you, the people of God. And I not only thank you for your attendance, I thank you for your giving. I want to say it. I thank you for your support, for our elders and deacons, mothers, missionaries, brothers and sisters, and friends, amen, who support from afar off. We welcome your gifts. Amen. If you don't have a church home, you can tie it to Old Landmark. You may give your gifts on a regular basis and the blessing of the Lord cover you wherever you are, protect you and give you all the things that you need in God. Watch God work it out for you. Have faith in God. Trust in him because he trusts you. He trusted you so much he gave you the earnest of his spirit, put a deposit of righteousness in you that you could know him as a true and living savior. Everybody that can, prepare yourself to bring the Lord a gift. Give God something, everybody give him something. Uh, tithe, offerings, whatever you have to give, render it to the Lord. Bring the Lord your gift. If you don't mind, write in there, I gave, so others can know that the saints do give, that the people of God do contribute. We bless God, we give him glory, we give him praise. That's right, give your gifts to the Lord. Thank you, Landmark and friends. Rising and justified, freed me forever. 
One day he's coming back. Thank you, Sister Brenda. Thank you, saints that are giving. God bless you. I appreciate you all. Thank you, Sister Stevens. Thank you, Elder Franks. Minister. We appreciate you, Elder Franks. Oh, yes. How many know living and love you? Thank you, Sister Julia. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Don't you sit it on down, Lord. Send it down. Or let the Holy Ghost. Send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. We can live together if you send it on down, oh Lord. Oh, we can live righteous if you send it on down. Send it on down, Lord. Send it on down, yeah. Send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost. We can be healed if you send it on down. Come on, come on. We can be delivered when you send it on down, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost, oh, send him on down, Lord, send him on down. Oh, send him on down, Lord. Oh, Lord, let the Holy Ghost. God bless you. Praying for you. Let's keep one another lifted. People you see, you don't see. Call the name in prayers. Let them know we're meeting, we're back. We wear a mask if you choose to, but social distance continuously. Amen, we recommend you wear the mask. We recommend you keep social distance. The virus isn't going anywhere, and you don't know where it is. But you can help mitigate by protecting yourself. But what church is going to meet, we're going to worship. We're going to follow guidelines. We believe God for healing and deliverance. We believe God for power. Whatever you're going through, we believe God can send the Holy Ghost. Amen. His word has declared it. His peace is upon you. And I believe the blessing of the Lord is with you. Father in heaven, we thank you now. We give you glory. Thank you for your people and thank you for your word. We pray your blessing on your people everywhere. Let your will be done. Keep us and preserve us to the time of your coming, till we meet again. Let the blessing of God be upon us, and we give you glory and praise for it in Jesus' name. We all say thank God and amen. Send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Won't you send him on down, Lord? Send him on down. Let the Holy Ghost Come on down. God bless you.